Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about osmosis, diffusion and plasmolysis. So first we'll talk about diffusion. You may now ask, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a process that can only happen in water or in air, like with gas. For example, this coffee. At the bottom you can see the coffee and at the top you can see the milk. After a bit of time they will mix and if you wait longer there will be a complete mixture of both. So another example would be just salt water because at first the salt is just at one point but after a bit of time the salt will have completely mixed with the water. Now what is osmosis? So the principle of osmosis is based on diffusion. In this image, we can see a tube on which we see two solutions. The red one, in our case, um, a high concentration solution, and the blue one, in our case, water. So just for example, we take the high concentration solution as salt water. Now, we can see that there is a small membrane dividing the two solutions. It's called a semi-permeable membrane. The goal of this membrane is to let water through it to reduce the concentration of salt in the right liquid, meaning to compensate the imbalance of the concentrations. So now we can see over the time water is flowing through the semi-permeable membrane and to the high concentration. In late summer, when the cherries ripen, the sugar content inside the cell is at its peak. A rain shower can then burst the cherries when drops of water on the cherry flow into the cell interior because the concentration of dissolved sugar particles in the interior is much higher than on the outside. A balance of concentration can only be achieved by inflowing water because the sugar molecules are too large to be able to leave the semi-permeable membrane to the outside. As a result, the cherry soaks with water until it comes to the concentration balance. But as the cherry cells cannot expand at will, the cherry eventually bursts. Another example for osmosis is, for example, if you look at your hands after you've taken a bath or when swimming for a long time, you can recognize that your hands actually have had shrinked. And one reason for that is osmosis, which tries to compensate the difference of concentration between your hand and the water. In this case, it's the salt concentration. So the water from outside tries to compensate um, the concentration of salt molecules in your skin by flowing inside of it and making your hand shrink. Yeah. So our last topic is plasmolysis. So you may think, oh no, another complicated technical term. But it isn't that complicated. So first, uh, we have to see the difference between three solutions. The first one is called hypotonic. That means that in the cell there's a higher solute concentration and out of the cell there's a lower solute concentration. The next one is isotonic. That means uh, there's as much solute concentration in the cell and out of the cell. The last one is hypertonic. That means that there is a higher solute concentration outside of the cell than inside of the cell. We will continue with the hypertonic. Plant cells are surrounded by strong cell walls, which can withstand high internal pressures without bursting. In a hypertonic solution, the cell membrane shrinks within the cell but the cell wall remains intact. This is called plasmolysis. In opposite to that, in a hypotonic solution, the cell surrounded by the cell wall swells, but does not burst because the cell wall is strong enough to withstand the pressure. Thank you very much for your attention, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if we could help you. See you in the next video.